Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are going to look at a game of Unsleeved Revised. And it's actually the second time that I'm, I am recording a match like this. If you'd like to see the first recording, uh, you can click on the link that's on the screen right now. So as for this match, my brother, who's opposite to me on the left, is actually playing with a Green Beasts deck. And I am playing with a uh, blue-white control deck. And so we're blo both playing with a uh, completely revised build. And let's see, my brother's off with a Script Sprites, and I'm playing a Soul Net. And Soul Net is an artifact that can give you a life every time a creature leaves the battlefield. You've got to tap one, and then you gain a life. So that's the first um, blood is done by the Script Sprites. I'm on 19. He's probably going to attack again, playing a Wall of Ice. And I'm down to 18. The screen is a bit flaky every now and then. And I'm tapping three, and there is a Prodigal Sorcerer. Ooh, and that can deal with that Script Sprite's next turn. And no, there's no answer to that. Probably the last attack of the Script Sprites. I'm down to 17. But I can now kill the Script Sprites and gain some life. Okay, and as a response to his combat, I'm killing the Script Sprites, gaining a life from the Soul Net. And there's a giant... No, there's not a giant spider, because there is my Power Sink. So here you see the control element of my deck really working for me. Not playing anything at the moment. He's got two Wall of Ice. And he's playing a Stream of Life. So he's gaining four lives here. So that means he's on 24 now. And I hit him for one, ping him for one with the Prodigal Sorcerer. And it looks like I'm not drawing any white mana. That's probably why I'm stuck at the moment. And another Stream of Life. So he's on 27 at the moment. Playing a fourth land, but it's still an island, so I'm not finding my white mana. And remember, I'm playing white blue, and my brother is playing a mono green build, and there is a problem for me. That's a crawl worm, and I didn't counter. So that's a problem. Five mana now. Oh, did you see it? It looks like I have a sea serpent in hand. And I'm playing an Unsummon. You couldn't really see that on the screen, but I remember that I played an Unsummon. And he's recasting his Crawl Worm. I hit him for one. But that Unsummon is perfect because it buys me some time. And now he's attacking me and I'm getting, getting a full six damage. It's going quite fast. And my brother is having a Hurricane in his hand. And yes, that's the mana I needed to cast the Sea Serpent. Sea Serpent is 5-5, five, five, and it can only attack if my opponent has an island. But in this case, I want to use it as a huge wall, basically. Uh, and I blocked the Crawl Worm there, and he plays another Crawl Worm. And I cast another Sea Serpent, so that's a pretty good answer. And even though my brother's on 23, well, 22 now, it's, it looks like I have control of the game. And what's going to happen next? I'm playing a Samite Healer. Now, for the ones that don't know, Samite Healer is a 1-1 one, one for 2. And tap to prevent 1 damage to target creature or player. And I believe I forgot to ping at the end of that turn. Playing another Samite Healer. And this is the control element of the deck. Countering, playing Protocol Sorcerers, playing Samite Healers. Attacking with the Crawl Worm, Chum blocking it with the Sea Serpent. Well, not Chum, I mean, they're, they're both dead. Gaining life from the Soul Net as well. So I got a Crawl Worm off the table and I gained two lives. So that's not too bad. And I'm using my Phantasmal Terrain there to make a forest into an island. Unfortunately, my Sea Serpents are gone. Then again, they couldn't have done much uh, facing those Wall of Ice. And a wall of brambles. So that looks interesting. I saw a script sprites there, a hurricane, and a fog. And I am playing. Ooh, this is nice. I am playing uh, Mega uh, Mesa Pegasus with an armor on there. So it's now a one three. And it looks like I've got control of the game. My brother's down to nineteen now. I'm on fourteen at the moment. Pinging him, going to eighteen. Playing an island, attacking with my flyer. And this is kind of the way we used to play 
uh, magic when we just started. And there's a huge, oh, that was a big moment in the game. It went really, really fast. But my brother basically played a huge hurricane. As you can see, I'm only on 14. Um, but I was able to counter it using a power sink. I mean, he had to do it because it was his only way out. Um, and it looks like it, look, it looks like he's really stuck now. He needs like a desert twister or something, but I'm not sure if, if it's in the deck. Another a hurricane here. Wow. How much damage is that? 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 damage. And I'm taking it. I'm gaining a life from the soul net, and I'm taking it. So I'm down to 4, and my brother's down to 4. And I'm not using my semi healers, so that's um, stupid. There's no other word for that. And I'm using a healing staff to give myself three more lives. But I could have prevented two points of life loss. Okay, I'm doing it now. I guess we're being um, we're forgiving each other for this. You don't play with a semi healer every day, or at least I don't. So kind of have to try to remember what do these cards do. There's a script sprites and a spell blast. Guess I could have pinged it as well, but I just want this game to be over as fast as possible. You never know what your opponent might pull. Bring him down to one, and that's the end of the first game. So that's a, fi a victory for the white-blue deck. So that's 1-0. And on we go to the second match. Uh, the second game, actually, I guess, because the whole thing is a match. So the second game. So my brother gets to start. Looks like a good hand there, I saw. Ooh, and I have a soul net again. Anyway, sorry, I saw a wild growth. So there it is, wild growth. And for me, it's a turn one soul net. I think that soul net gives you more life than um, you might think. It's, it's pretty useful. And there's the semi healer again. But my brother's off to a really good start. Turn three, and he's playing a giant spider. Oh my. Oh, and I think we're looking at the art because some people say that in the smoke you can see a face in the smoke on the on the semi healer art, um, but I can't really see it. So it's something that we were talking about, and I'm playing a prodigal sorcerer. So this looks very much uh, the same as the board state that I had in the first game. There's the giant spider swinging in. Of course, it can prevent one damage, so the giant spider only does one damage. So even though it's huge, thanks to my semi healer. And there's a second semi healer, and that means that I can pretty much prevent all the damage being uh, dealt by the giant spider. But there is a war mammoth. It's a three-three trample for four, and uh, it's pretty big. I ping him for one, just like I did in the, in the first game, slowly pinging him to death. But there is a problem now for me, and I'm playing that armor. So that means that my um, Protocol Sorcerer is now a 1-3, and my brother decides to attack with both. And this is interesting, because according to the new rules, I can actually block, and I can deal damage. And I think we've, saw, uh, we've seen a Giant Growth earlier, so I'm sure he's going to use his Giant Growth now. Uh, but there I go. So I block his Giant Spider with my Protocol Sorcerer, and then I tap the Sorcerer to deal a damage. And so I can exactly deal 4 damage to the Giant Spider. But he's putting a giant growth on the giant spider, making it a 5-7 creature. So now the giant spider can kill my protocol sorcerer and my two semite healers. But remember, I haven't tapped my semite healers yet, so they can still be used to prevent damage. So I'm now asking my opponent to tell me how he wants to divide the damage being dealt. So I can kind of prevent it. So I'm saving one semite healer. And I'm saving my protocol sorcerer, but my other semi healer dies, but I'm gaining a life from my soul net. So it's not too bad for me. Uh, basically, we've just swapped a giant growth for a semi healer. That's another way of looking at it. And I'm disenchanting his giant growth because I'm afraid, afraid is a big word, but I don't want him to cast a crow worm for six. So by taking away the giant growth, taking away one of his mana, so he only has four mana sources now. Playing that Wall of Ice, unfortunately it's not too helpful for him, since I'm usually winning with Flyers or with the Protocol Sorcerer. 
And now he's playing an Iron Root Tree Folk. Wow, I haven't seen that in a while, and I am power syncing it. It always makes, almost makes me sad that I power sync that card, because it's, it's cool art, it's that tree with that smirky face, and it's a 3-5, and it's a pretty cool board state. If you have a giant spider, a war mammoth, and a um, Iron Root Tree Folk there. So I just keep on pinging. Slow and steady wins the race. And my brother now is 8 mana, so it could be dangerous. And, ooh, I'm playing a Sea Serpent to make matters worse. And it looks like my opponent is stuck. Oh, there you go. Okay, so a Script Sprites, a Hurricane again, and a Fog. That Fog can always be useful as a combat trick. And he's playing the Crow Worm, but again, I can block the Crow Worm easily, just sacrifice one of my Sea Serpents, and then he loses the Crow Worm, I lose the Sea Serpent, and that's fine. Obviously, he's not attacking now. Playing another War Mammoth. So he's got the creatures, but for some reason, it's really difficult with my board state for him to break through and deal some damage. And now I am playing a 4-1 Flyer, I forgot the name. Um, Phantasmal Forces. Phantasmal Forces. 4-1 Four Flyer for three, uh, 4 mana. And it has an upkeep of 1 blue mana. And this is a problem for my, my brother, this Flyer. But remember, he has a Hurricane. Because uh, he, he showed that to us earlier. So he can cast his Hurricane for 1. Or 2, actually, because I have the Samite Healer. So he has to cast it for 2. But he also has a Giant Spider to block. So I'm attacking... He's blocking on his giant spider, and I'm using a healing staff to prevent the damage being done. So that means that my phantasmal forces survive, and the giant spider is dead. And what is my brother going to do now? And this is smart, so he knows that maybe I have a power sink, so he doesn't want the power sink to happen. So he's playing a smaller hurricane to enable him to cancel a possible power sink. Unfortunately for him, I have an unsummon. I'm taking back the Phantasmal Forces. And I'm pinging him for one. I'm not forgetting the pinging. And he's down on five already, so it's going quite fast. And I'm casting my Phantasmal Forces again. That's interesting with the Prodigal Sorcerer. And people have seen the same thing playing with the Copper Tablet. If you just... I consistently deal one damage every time it works. And a problem for my brother now as well is that he can no longer really use his hurricanes because it'll take him down. There is a fog, so they'll buy him some. Nope, there's a spell blast. So that's it. That's game. And I'm winning here 2 to nothing with the control deck. I didn't see that coming because I was like, well, green beasts, big beasts. Anyway, this, uh, this was the match for today and the video. Thank you for watching Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic, and see you next time.